Good morning and welcome to Waking Up with Don. Today I have a special guest. I've got Maria Goodwin from the Workforce Center. Welcome to the show, Maria. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Now, we've known each other for a few years. You know, we've kind of known the same people and mm -hmm. uh, both went to FSU here in, in Panama City. Go Knowles. Uh, yeah, go Knowles. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of that going around. And uh, now you're at the Workforce Center. For a lot of people who may be watching, what is the Workforce Center? What's their mission? Um, the Workforce Center really is aimed at helping job seekers and employers make a good match. Mm -hmm. um, all of our services are free of charge. It doesn't cost anything for our business partners to post positions with us. Same with our job seekers. Um, everything we provide is free of charge. And we really offer a wide um, array of different services. So um, we can service any, any job seeker or any employer. It doesn't matter where you're at. So you could be a high school student, you know, trying to enter the workforce for the first time, or you could be a seasoned professional with uh, maybe graduate level degree. We really assist the wide. I wish I'd have known that. <laughs> See that now I'm learning something here because right. I remember um, my son had turned 16 several years ago and he says, dad, I want to get a job. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. let's go see if we can fill out a few applications for you. It's tough for a 16 year old to get a job. And when we went to some of these fast food places and I'm a little older, but I would just remember when I was in high school, that's where high schoolers worked. Right. And we went to some of these places and they were like full blown adults working there. And they look at a kid and they look at the minimum wage and like, you're not worth minimum wage, you know, because you don't know anything. It was really hard for him to get a job. So had I known, I'd have, I'd have gone over to the workforce center and said, hey, do something with this kid, will you? Absolutely. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, in fact, that was a common thing that we've, we've seen during the recession is that um, because there were so many people out of work, your um, high school students or even your college graduates that have a degree had a very high unemployment rate mm -hmm. because they were competing against um, some of your workers that had the degree and the experience. Yeah. So um, we really try to work with them one-on-one -on -one and give them tips on, it, it's simple things on how to fill out that application. It could be something as on your application, ask the reason for leaving your previous job or your salary expectations. If you answer that wrong, then mm -hmm. you could be eliminated from from the search um, right off the bat. And, and yeah. what we really try to tell um, a lot of our job seekers is that in the before the recession, it was really a process, hiring was really a process of selection. Like I wanna find the best candidate. But now there's so many candidates in the job market, it's a process of elimination. So you wanna try not to get eliminated either by putting something wrong on your application, not having a resume that mm -hmm. really highlights your skills and how it fits for that job opening. You really wanna to try to stay in the game as long as possible. So your first, most of the time your first impression is your application or your resume. So say I'm unemployed, mm -hmm. I'm home, I'm on the couch, and I'm watching daytime TV and I'm watching this show. Uh -huh. All right. What do I need to know? I mean, how do I avail myself of your services? Do I just go online and go, hey, Workforce Center, make an appointment, come in and see you? Mm -hmm. Say I need a resume written. I don't know how to do that. Or maybe I'm chronically unemployed and I'm trying to break a cycle. Right. I mean, are those the types of people that you see or do you see everybody? We see everybody. And we, and we really do see quite a few people that have been unemployed for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And it is harder to get your foot in the door if, if you've been out of work for a while. Um, the first thing I tell them to do is to come to the Workforce Center. Um, we have a lot of resources that are available. We've got computers, fax machines, copy machines. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things that um, we have people to do is to register on our Employ Florida Marketplace. That's a, a, a statewide tool that's used and it really, um, you register and you can search for jobs there. It provides a comprehensive listing of all the jobs that are available in our area. So we have employers that post directly with us. So you set up a profile? Profile. And then mm -hmm. it kind of matches you to jobs throughout the state. Right. Not necessarily just here in Panama City. You can set it up. Um, it's really the way you set it up. You can mm -hmm. set it up to match jobs for a particular geographic region. So if you know you don't want to leave Bay County, for example, you can set it up where it, it sends jobs to you that are just in your field in Bay County. Or if you're willing to move to other parts of the state, you can widen your search and include Jacksonville, Orlando. It's really mm -hmm. up to however you want to set it up in your preferences. But your chances you for employment are probably greater if you cast a wider net. Is right. that 
a, 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 a reasonable assumption, mm -hmm. I suppose. Because the way it was explained to me by a, a few people, it's it's not just ability, it's availability. Right. And, and where you need to be, you know, mm -hmm. to get employed. And sometimes you just got to go where the jobs are. You can't always have your cake. Exactly, mm -hmm. and sometimes it takes um, really having some flexibility mm -hmm. and understanding what your skills are and um, there may not be that exact job that you've had in the past out there. Mm -hmm. um, but it may be something similar. Something that you can similar, work with. exactly. Something that you can say, well, my skills that I did in my last job are transferable to this type of job. Marie, we have to run off to a break, but we're going to drill down into this more on the other side of these okay. important messages. And first to our weather, brought to you by the West Pittman Firm. Welcome back. I'm speaking with Maria Goodwin of the Workforce Center. We're talking about how you can get a job through the Workforce Center. Okay, so here's lazy Don Arias. Okay, unemployed Don Arias <laughs> laying on the couch watching this show. You've got an event coming up, don't you? Absolutely. Um, tomorrow. Today. Oh, I'm sorry. We're pre-recorded. <laughs> Dirty little secret. We're pre-recorded. So let's make believe it's today. So today. <laughs> this afternoon. This afternoon at 2 o'clock we're doing a job fair that's specifically for job seekers and employers in the manufacturing industry. You know, one thing that we've heard is that there's a skills gap in manufacturing so that these manufacturers actually have job openings but they don't have enough qualified people mm -hmm. to fill those positions and the workforce board and the um, Gulf Coast State College is really trying to work through the Advanced Technology Center in filling a lot of those skill gaps. What are some of the skills that uh, we're looking for? Let's um, say you're like me and you don't have any skills. They're looking for um, welders, CNC machinists are mm -hmm. some of the, the top skills that or positions that they're recruiting for that they can't find qualified candidates. Now say I, I need some training mm -hmm. to do that. Will some of these companies train me or is there some place I can go to get trained? Well, at, through Gulf Coast State mm -hmm. College there is a, um, a new program and it's called the Florida Trade Program that they're offering um, certificate programs that you can get a certified production assistant certification to go and work in an industrial environment. They have got classes that are starting in January and there's going to be several more throughout this year and next year, but really at looking at giving um, folks those hands-on skills so they, they can be very productive when they go to work in a manufacturing So facility. this afternoon there's a job fair, uh -huh. and where is it? It's going to be at the Advanced Technology Center. At Gulf Coast. At Gulf Coast State mm -hmm. College. Starts at 2 o'clock. And that's that new building, right? It's that new building. Mm -hmm. It's going to be on the third floor. They're going to have nine different local manufacturers there, mm -hmm. and it's going to be some of your big companies like Rock 10, Oceaneering, Jensen, mm -hmm. all going to be represented. And what time should I show up there? What time do I need to get off the couch and, and go up there? I would say be there by 145 and mm -hmm. come dressed to meet one-on-one -on -one with hiring managers and come dressed with or come prepared with your resume. Well, that's an important thing is the, the way you present yourself, showing up on time mm -hmm. and looking like you're the type of guy someone or gal someone would like to work with. Right. It's a great opportunity because so often people submit applications or they submit resumes. This is your opportunity to really get in front of someone and make a great first impression. So how should I dress? Should I wear a suit? Should I wear a tie? Or you can be like me and have this casual little talk show thing with jeans. How should I dress with um, this? I wouldn't necessarily go with a, a suit and a tie. I mean, these are manufacturers, but I would make sure that, that you're very presentable, you have mm -hmm. a collared shirt on, it fits you well, it's clean, it's pressed. Um, business and, casual, I guess. Business casual, and mm -hmm. that you come with almost your 30-second commercial or your elevator speech. Like, this mm -hmm. is your sales pitch to a potential employer on why they should hire you. Now, I know what an elevator speech is. A lot of people may not. Can you explain that to us and maybe... 15 seconds or so. <laughs> sure, you want to no you want to highlight your you know your three um, key selling points on mm -hmm. you know what you bring to the table and where you want to go um, you know what your next steps in life are. So I might say I'm Maria Goodwin. I've got a degree from communications. I've got a marketing background, and I would love the opportunity to work for you. Yep, and then mm -hmm. I'll say okay. Well, you look like the type of person I might be able to mm -hmm. deal with. So. This afternoon at about 1.30, Gulf Coast Community College at the Advanced Technology, Advanced Center. Technology Center for the Work Fair. Marie Goodwin, thank you so much for coming on the show, and thanks for helping us all find jobs. Oh, no problem. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you. We'll see you after these messages.
Hi, good morning, and welcome back to Wake It Up with Don. I'm Zenobia Andrews, your business system strategist, and I'm so excited to be bringing you your Max Biz tip for today. Today, we're going to be talking about things to consider, short term goals to consider when starting your business. You know, we've been talking about all week about building your dream business, and today we're going to be talking about things that you should consider. Number one, what is your business name? You know, what do you want to call your business? Only thing I want to um, just share with you with this is you want to make sure that your business name is aligned with your brand, your products, your services, that they kind of all align and they're congruent together. Also, you want to consider, how do I want to fund my, my business? How do I want to, you know, it takes money to do business. How am I going to get the resources in to be able to do my business? Some options that you may have is getting a business loan, you know, or you can partner with friends and families. You'll be amazed with how, when you share with people your dreams and your aspirations, how they will support you in giving you investment dollars. In addition to that, if you are in the state of Florida, you need to go to sunbiz.org and you need to set Set up your business, your framework, if you want to become a corporation or an LLC. You want to go to sunbiz.org and establish your business as an organization, as a corporation or whatever, okay? This has been your max out moment, your max tip for today. I'm Zenobia Andrews, your business system strategist, and I would love to connect with you. You can find me on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter. You follow me, I'll follow you back. If you need more insight, more information, Information on any of this information, find me at www.zenoviaandrews.com. Welcome back to Waking Up with Don. I've got a special guest here. All oh, my guests are special, but she's super <laughs> special because she is Ashley McDaniel Hi. from Plum Better. Ashley, welcome to the show. Plum Delightful. Plum Delightful yes. is right. I got to tell you, uh, I, I went past there. And I drove and it looked, it's a little tiny building mm -hmm. from the street. From the street. The front angle, it just surprises you when you walk in. It surprised me because I walked in and that store goes way back. It does. It's 5,500 square feet. Holy mackerel. Mm -hmm. And it's an older building. It's in, in, in Panama City, isn't it? It's 110 years old. It used to be the old Coke warehouse. Then it was a train depot. And then it turned into an antique shop and my family bought it. And they bought it from the man across the street, and then they turned it into their own antique, and then it's just formed as the year has gone on. So now you've got all this fashion stuff yes, going on in there, do. too. Mm -hmm. So it's really a cool, kind of warm, historic atmosphere mm -hmm. with antiques. And then you got, like, up-to-date fashions mm -hmm. there as well. Well, we try to keep the history of the building in there. We keep the old floors are the same. We just keep painting over them. We try to keep, you know, everything eclectic. And then we've moved our new jewelry in there and our new clothes in there. Well, I, I scored some Sorelli there yes. for the holidays. Yes. And it was kind of a big hit at home. So thank you for that. <laughs> Good. Good people Good. at Plum Delightful. And our wrapping, did she like it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you wrapped it too. <laughs> yes. I yes. mean, it just was for a guy like me, it's like, it's real easy. We try to make it easy. Show up, I want that. Yes. And wrap it, and you're. You're a sport it, after we that. We try to make it easy. Now, you brought some fashions with you to kind of show us mm -hmm. what's, what all stuff you sell there and what's mm -hmm. popular now. And uh, what are we looking at here? Now, we've got two of your two of your models here or yes, two of your employees here that do. are uh, styling some stuff here for us. What are we looking at? We have Barbara and Judy. Hi, now, Barbara we and have Judy. Barb <laughs> <laughs> Barbara's in the Hound's Tooth, which has been really popular, popular this year. Uh -huh. um, even if you... You know, some people wear as Alabama fans. She is an Alabama fan. Or you can just wear, I wear it, and I am a Florida State fan. <laughs> so, Hound Suits is just really popular. And then mm -hmm. this you can wear in this um, spring. You can wear in the winter. You could add a jacket. So it's really transitional for, throughout the years. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Now, what else are we looking at here? And then she, uh, Barbara still has on Sorelli, and she has oh, on see. layering is really big this year, too. So she has her longer necklace on the Sorelli. Then she has her top St. Isabel line. It's a new Chanel button line. They use vintage Chanel, mix it in with the new, which is really, you know, everyone's mm -hmm. bringing back the vintage, too. So she has that jewelry on, too. That's a, that's a lot of jewelry, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. Well, every girl likes the bling, so. Yeah, that's right. Shiny <laughs> object. We all love them. Yes. And then Miss Judy has on our new leggings which are really popular this year, and they have um, little details. Well, you can't really tell, but they have some like fabric to it, designs a little bit. Well, it looks really cool because it, it almost looks like wallpaper. Yeah, it, it does, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Very stylish wallpaper, of course. Yes, of course. Yeah. Then we you put didn't pay for those on, did you? You're actually wearing them, right? Right. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> I take them home with me. 
And then a little boots. I see a lot of those now. Boots are yes, kind boots of are in and boot socks. We have boot socks that have little. We I have a pair on, but you can't really see uh -huh. right now. I have little lace. Those are really in for this year too, boot and you socks. can wear them with either boots, mm -hmm. cowboy boots, everything. Then we put her in a top and a little jacket, so she's perfect for this cooler weather mm -hmm. we have in. And she also, if you can notice, has the layering look, which is really popular. The long necklace. When you say layering, we're layering jewelry. Ooh, layering jewelry. Mm -hmm. You know, two, three on at a time. You have your longer ones to give you the longing effect, and then the shorter necklace on top. Well, this is really cool stuff. We have a lot more to look at. We've got to run off to a break. Nice. And we'll be right back with the good people from Plum Delightful after these messages. Welcome back. I'm here with Ashley from Plum Delightful. And Hi. what do we got here, Ashley? It looks like a bunch of bling here. Yes, we brought a little samples of what we carry at the shop. Now, this is just a little tiny bit of what we have. So we just brought a little bit. We have a new pearl line, which pearls are always classic. You can wear them with anything, jeans, dress them up, dress them down. Mm -hmm. So that's going to, these pearls come in all different colors and sizes. Then we brought our new Chanel um, St. Isabel line. It's vintage Chanel buttons and it's placed in either a vintage piece or a new piece and each one's different. Um, all one of a kind. They're super great. We have earrings, necklace. I have a ring on in it. Um, Earrings, necklaces, pendants, they're great pieces. I got a few for Christmas. <laughs> I'm a little obsessed with those. <laughs> yeah, go figure. Then we have the <laughs> Chanel, which everyone knows about, but this is, you know, a new style. The or, um, Shirley, Sorelli, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this can is we the see, one. May I pick this up? Yes, of so course. So we get a good shot of this. It's Sorelli a lifetime here. warranty. So. Oh, yeah. oh, it's a lifetime warranty. Good. <laughs> yes. Virtually indestructible. So if anything happens, yeah. you're fine. <laughs> it is beautiful stuff. Yes. And, you know, I actually, like I said, scored some of this for mm -hmm. the wife. Yes. Uh, she loved the holiday. it. She loved it. Every, I mean, yeah. you can't go wrong with it. It's you great. Can. It's and lifetime it's warranty. All different colors. All different colors, mm -hmm. sizes, price range. We always do Sorelli sets. Mm -hmm. So we always get you in there with your budget, you, get, you know. And what all is this here? This is the um, St. Isabel line. Uh-huh. That is the new buttons. And I love this red with the mm -hmm. cubic zirconians around it. It's great. It's like a little Marine Corps globe and anchor to me. <laughs> but hey, I'm a military guy, so that's the way my mind yes. works. Yes. But it is uh, kind of eye-catching. They're great pieces. And you can switch out the chains and everything. Well, we have a couple of models with yes, us here. Who we do we have here? We have Barbara first, and she's actually modeling a plum top that we do. She's put it with leggings. You can do it with leggings, jeans, mm -hmm. you know, just some boots. It's cute little lace, which lace is very in right now. Mm -hmm. And then underneath it is a cute little pop of color. Then we've paired her with Sorelli, and she has the new um, coral reef on. Coral reef has your blues, your pinks, your bright golds. It's perfect for the spring. Oh, and nice. she has the layering look too. She has the long necklace with the short necklace on top. And then she has her big chunky bracelet, which is great. And she actually might have a Chanel ring or a Sorelli ring on too. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And see, she's mixed her colors. Mixing's good. You can mix too. You don't have to stay with all gold. You can do silver, gold, everything. So fun. almost anything goes nowadays, anything right? Goes. When it comes to fashion. <laughs> Anyways, yes. first it was like, you know, wines yeah. and now fashion. Anything <laughs> goes. You know, think. Now, who's our next model? Then we have Judy. Hi, Judy. Judy has on our fabulous plum top. We love these. We call them plum tops because all of us have them. She has them on with leggings. They're just so fun. Mm -hmm. And she has corduroy leggings, which are great, too. Those are new. Especially the way the weather's been. Yes. A little corduroy would be nice. And these tops are great because they're flowy, and they still make you look good. And they're so comfortable. They're amazingly comfortable. Then she has the layering look, too. She has her long coral reef as well paired with a shorter one. But her coral reef has more of the browns in it than more of the teals. Coral reef. Mm -hmm. it's each Sorelli mm -hmm. piece names their color. Oh, I see. So, oh, very nice. Okay. Now, I, I bought something a little more neutral. I don't know what it was. It was kind of tan or whatever, but... Uh, I think you got the core you. collection. What was it? I think you got the core, if I remember. I think I may have. <laughs> I, I don't recall. Actually, we've, we've seen the fashions that you brought, and we, yes. we saw all this jewelry that you brought, but what is this that you're wearing? Could you describe this outfit for well, us? This is a fun outfit. We can start down with my cowboy boots. We're starting to carry cowboy boots because you can do them any time of the year. You can do them with winter, spring, fall, 100 degrees outside, or 10 below. You can do cowboy boots. Oh, wow. And okay. then we paired them with boot socks. Boot socks with the lace again. We're seeing the lace trend. And they just stick out a little bit, like they're fun little boot socks. Mm -hmm. And then we did a flowy lace and um, white shirt. And then we paired it with a lace, again, you're seeing lace, vest. That's really fun. 
Now, what are you wearing around your neck? What's all that going on? I have a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> I have my Love Heels, which Love Heels is really neat. Love Heels? Love Heels. They plant mm -hmm. trees for every design. So okay. it gives back to the community. And then you have your pop of color. And that's the name of the line, it's right? The name it's of the line. Love Heels, okay. Then you have your pop of color with the turquoise, because turquoise mm -hmm. is so in right It looks now. very Native American, it, yeah. And mm -hmm. then we have our Lil Lily Chartier Pearl line, which is um, freshwater pearls and leather. Mm -hmm. And then I had to get my Chanel in there. I love my Chanel ring. Mm -hmm. That's a nice watch you got going on there and some <laughs> other stuff. I have love there. heels on with my watch, too. Uh -huh. My watch I stole from my family. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, not stealing if it's your family? It's not stealing. It's, it's borrowing. borrowing. Right. But this look is from Plum Delightful, so... Well, that's awesome stuff. Well, thanks so I much for it. coming on the show. Thank you. And uh, I feel like I've just had a brush with culture. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. You've been watching Waking Up With Don. We'll see you next time.